it's time for the lightning round. The lightning round is a fast-paced look at the latest headlines in climate, clean energy, and transportation. It's air pollution season in India, Brian, and boy, are things bad this week. Air pollution levels are up as much as 130 times recommended levels. Uh, twice would be horrific. 130 times recommended levels? Uh, I can't wrap my head around it. The pollution is so bad, some flights had to be canceled. Can you imagine? You can't land a plane yeah. because of smog. Not well, fog, remember smog. A few years ago, there was a, a volcano erupted, and there was a, lo a lot of ash in the air around Europe, and a lot of people got uh, stranded because, yeah, a lot of flights couldn't fly because of the volcano ash, but sure, like smog, why not? Smog can get so thick to do the, the exact same thing. Yeah. And even some trains, can you imagine how bad it has to be when trains get canceled? <laughs> so wow. trains were canceled. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not good. Levels of cancer causing particles have surged far past the daily limit set by the World Health Organization. It's gotten so bad that India's Supreme Court has taken up the issue and ordered local governments to take, quote, all possible action to mitigate the problem. It's also prompted authorities to close schools and switch students to online classes. The bad air season runs from November into January, usually each year, and is aided by cold air inversions, uh, geography like the mountain range that traps the air, and largely by crop burning, which is prohibited yet still taking place. You think that would be the first thing that they would address? I don't know the logistics of that. I know that the central government is a long way from a lot of the rural regions and they're blaming the rural governments for not cracking down. No, and I just want to add, we're starting to have our own, uh, you know, air pollution season here. That's, that's a terrible term that I'm sad that that exists. But of course, we have so much forest fire smoke, smoke now in the summers that you could say that, that our air pollution season is the summer. As we record this, Brian, on Tuesday midday, a bomb cyclone is developing off the coast of the U.S. Pacific Northwest and the coast of British Columbia, Canada. Fortunately, this system will not travel all the way inland because it is essentially a hurricane. It is a hurricane, essentially, in cold northern Pacific waters, very cold waters. Uh, yeah, it is quite something. This is a really exceptional storm. This is uh, almost unheard of, really. Now here, I want to highlight, I know it gets cut off a little bit because that's where the model ends, but just look at that circulation. It almost looks like a hurricane. You wouldn't be remiss for thinking that. The pressure at the center of that storm is what you'd expect to see at the center of a Category 3 or 4 hurricane in the Atlantic. Now the wind speeds around it are going to be like a Category 1 hurricane. These storms usually occur in the western North Atlantic due to the regular mixing of cold and warm air systems. But, you know, the warm part of that is getting warmer and they're getting more severe. And also the pressure of the low pressure system drops extremely fast. That's what a bomb cyclone is. is a, and it's, it's, it's like a category three or four. The pressure in the center of this cyclone is like a cat, but the winds are only a um, category one. Fortunately, it's not really coming on land, but it will affect land. Uh, the owner of the social media Platform X posted a video about how we have to go through an extinction event to become stronger. So, Brian, my predictions about this guy are all coming true, that climate change is not going to be an important thing. He wants us to go through it and become extinct. Uh, Joe Biden will announce new cons uh, conservation efforts and funding when he becomes the first sitting U.S. president to visit the Amazon on Sunday. And you can see more on Bloomberg. No link that I can provide you, unfortunately. Oh, it's time for a CES Fast Fact. U.S. oil companies started getting subsidies in 1913. Did you know that? No. Ford was then making a, the Model T. That's 111 years of subsidies for oil and gas. You're welcome. Next time someone complains about EV or battery factory subsidies, bring that up. Uh, the global energy sector added over 2.5 million new workers in 2023 last year. Now, while around two-thirds of those jobs were in clean energy, the number of fossil fuel positions also continued to rise slightly. Uh, Chris Wright, Trump's nominee to run the Department of Energy, calls climate change a religion and the left's justification for top-down control. That's the nominee for the Department of Energy, which affects a lot of what we talk about. It's not just oil and gas. It's other kinds of energy and, and 
Not good. In the United States, solar is held back more by red tape than it's helped by subsidies. Rooftop solar there in the United States is three to four times as expensive as some other parts of the world. Not Canada, of course. We're kind of like the United States. North Americans pay more per watt in solar subsidies than the rest of the world pays in total to get the solar going. You know, our subsidies are what are supposed to just bump us up, but that's what the whole cost is elsewhere because of red tape. Uh, this is from Yale Environment. Brazil wants to develop a bioeconomy in the Amazon with rural communities sustainably harvesting foods to be sold on the international market. A fully developed Amazon bioeconomy could employ nearly a million people. And we have a link to that story from Yale Environment. Uh, more than a third of the world's commercial shipping capacity carries fossil fuels. We've said that a lot, but here's the numbers. 13,000 oil tankers. That's a lot of oil tankers. I wouldn't have thought that yeah. there'd be even a thousand, let alone 13. Uh, 3,000 LNG uh, LPG tankers and twenty five hundred dollar or twenty five hundred dollars twenty five hundred bulk carriers transporting coal still. Nearly three in five Americans see themselves switching to an EV within ten years, according to a new study. Uh, Green Car Report says that link in your show notes. Uh, Bloomberg NEF projects that global EV sales, including both battery electric and plug-in hybrids, will grow to 16.7 million units by the end of this year. That is compared to just 13.9 million last year. I mean, it's not a doubling or anything, but it's still a significant raise. rise. And when we started this podcast, which is coming up nearly five years ago, it was only 2 million per year that they were selling. But even that was, we were pretty happy about that. <laughs> Yeah. Because <laughs> it was up from 1 million. 2 million up to uh, now 16.7 million this year. That's that's pretty big. So that's 16.7 16 16 .7 million non-gas using cars that are replacing other ones. Uh, battery maker in China, CATL's uh, chairman, is open to a U.S. battery plant as long as Trump lets China join in its EV supply chain. We'll see about that. Electric had that story. Uh, Bula Whale, the city of 700,000 in Zimbabwe, may run out of piped water by the end of the year. These are stories that we're going to see more often with climate change. Yeah, that's uh, that's not a good situation. Uh, we, we have tons of fresh water here in Canada, so we tend to not think about uh, those kinds of things. And finally this week, China just connected its largest single-capacity solar farm built on former coal mining area, which is the in the Gobi Desert. To the grid it's connected to the grid three point you know three gigawatts which is three nuclear reactors at peak output uh it's in the gobi desert and the solar farm could power two million households which is a pretty big city this huge project will save about 1.71 million tons of standard coal each year and cut carbon dioxide emissions by roughly 4.7 million tons China's solar and wind power generation growth exceeded total power demand growth in October, showing how the clean energy boom is driving power sector emissions to peak in China and not go up any further, Brian. Yes, desert solar, that's something we've talked about before. Uh, and that is our show for this week. You can contact us, cleanenergyshow at gmail.com. On social media, we're Clean Energy Pod. You can join our Patreon community for free to get more posts. That's a great home for the show there on Patreon. And you can support us with a purchase from the merch store that's listed in the show notes uh, or on the website. And please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, make sure to hit the follow button for us to follow the podcast on your podcast app. 